हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक्स दिस इज द एटीन वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट फॉरेक्स रिजर्व ओके सो वी हैव बीन यूजिंग दिस वर्ड अगेन एंड अगेन इन सो मेनी लेसन फॉरेक्स रिजर्व आर बी आई रिजर्व सो वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज द मीनिंग एंड यू नो वॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट फॉरेक्स रिजर्व वी विल सी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन ओके सो वॉट आर फॉरेक्स रिजर्व Forex reserves are basically the assets held by the central bank or monetary authority of any country. Okay, so monetary authority of any country means the Reserve Bank of India in India. Okay, just like we have Reserve Bank of India, every country has a monetary authority that is also known as central bank, or you know the different names are there in different countries. For example, in India we have Reserve Bank of India. in australia we have reserve bank of australia in england we call it bank of england boe okay then you know different so in usa we call it the federal reserve of usa so there are different names to different monetary authorities in different countries okay so the assets which are held by these monetary authority of any country in the form of foreign currencies gold reserves or sdrs sdr we have already seen what is it it is the reserve currency created by imf okay so any of these assets held by the monetary authority they all constitute forex reserves now let us look at uh, the forex reserves what are the, what are the different components so one is obviously foreign currency so this in this foreign currency basically the international currencies are there which are kept for example us dollar then euro pound yen and chinese yuan these are the five international currencies uh, you know you must also be knowing that these are also the currencies used by imf to calculate the value of sdr okay so that's why these are the international currencies then foreign treasury bills basically the treasury bills issued by the foreign governments so that are also held by rbi rbi purchases those uh, bills and they form a part of assets then foreign bank deposits rbi also has uh, you know deposits in the foreign banks then foreign government securities right so just like t bills of foreign government there are government securities also of the foreign government all this together this four components they together are called foreign currency assets okay they are known as fca then obviously there is gold okay gold is also an asset sdr uh, special drawing rights and then there is another component which is known as reserve tranche position of imf okay now what is this reserve transposition of imf i'll explain it to you in a very simple way see in imf we know that imf this international monetary fund is formed by contributions from the member countries so there are 189 member countries in imf so all these 189 member countries will contribute to the imf fund this imf kitty and they will deposit uh, you know uh, the money in the form of uh, either the international currencies or their local currency okay their domestic currency now out of this uh, you know whatever their contribution is so initially their contribution is equal to their quota also this also we know contribution is equal to their quota in imf like how much loan they can aware in the in the time of uh, balance of payment crisis so that defines their quota now out of this quota also okay so out of this quota there is one reserve quota okay out of this quota there is a reserve quota reserve quota which that country can take loan freely okay without any uh, okay uh, so basically without any uh, approval or or without much uh, uh, you know ado so that country can basically take that loan freely and that is known as reserve quota of that country and that reserve quota is nothing but the reserve tranche position in imf so that also forms the part of uh, the international reserves because that country can tap onto that quota that reserve quota freely okay it does not have to go through all the you know lot of imf abiding and you know lot of regulations and uh, all the different uh, conditions that the imf puts so they don't have to go through that so they can use it freely so that's why it is it is it is a very much free money for the uh, free money basically means uh, that you know it is uh, rbi or the monetary authority is free to use that money whenever it needs okay now what is the use of forex reserves 
as we have seen forex reserves are used in the time of crisis basic especially the for uh, the balance of payment crisis uh, to to support our currency to sustain our currency against excessive fluctuations okay so that is where our forex reserves are used now as of 9th december 2022 this is the latest data that i could get okay 9 december 2022 how much foreign currency forex reserve assets we had so that is the data you can get from the rbi website so rbi publishes a weekly report on this basically okay so uh, it uh, so 9 december what was the position it, that report is published on 16th december after one week okay so after one week the report gets published so this was the latest report of 16 december i could get and the position was as on 9th of december okay so foreign currency assets uh, in the form of fca we have 500.1 billion dollars worth of foreign reserves then gold we have 40.7 billion dollars worth of gold then sdr we have 18.1 billion dollar of sdr and reserve transposition is 5.1 billion dollars so total as of 9th of december 2022 our foreign reserve assets forex is basically 564 billion dollars approximately okay and see last year in 2021 in september india had the highest amount of forex reserve all time high okay all time high forex reserve in india was in september 2021 and it reached up to 642.5 billion dollars okay see now in the last one year it has reduced from 642.5 to 564 billion because you must be knowing that a lot of capital is flying away from our country it is going out of india and going to usa because the usa federal is rising the interest rates okay federal reserve of usa it is increasing the interest rates and because of that there is capital outflow from our country because of capital outflow our rupee is depreciating and in order to save our rupee rbi is basically buying rupees okay rbi is buying rupees and selling dollars since it is selling dollars it is its foreign currency is getting depleted okay so that is the reason why from 642.5 in september 2021 today it has reduced to 564 billion so basically this is the condition it gets fluctuating you know every day uh, you don't need to exactly remember the exact number but try to know that it is 500 600 billion around in our country okay and india has the fourth uh, fourth largest forex reserve in the world fourth largest forex reserves so uh, uh, again this position fluctuates sometimes it becomes fifth sometimes it becomes fourth okay so there is a competition between russia and uh, and india here so sometimes india is fourth sometimes russia is fourth sometimes india becomes fifth sometimes russia becomes fifth so uh, so this is the position now there is another concept that i wanted to explain to you in this particular video was about nominal and ppp gdp okay purchasing power parity based gdp so you must have heard this in the news so many times that india's gdp is about 3. you, you know 469 trillion dollars in nominal terms in 2022 this is the estimated amount and 11.665 trillion in ppp terms so see in nominal terms our gdp is 3.5 trillion whereas in ppp terms our uh, gdp is 11.6 trillion so why is there what is the meaning of these two term right so what should we consider to be our true gdp this nominal gdp or this ppp gdp what is the difference between them we will understand then there is another uh, headline that we see that india is the fifth largest economy in nominal terms and third largest in ppp terms okay so when we look at the ppp terms we are the third largest economy when we look in the nominal terms we are the fifth largest economy so again what is the difference between nominal and ppp we will look into this uh, in this particular video let us look at this see whenever a gdp figure is calculated in any country it is reported in country's own currency so india's nominal gdp is reported in rupees we have already seen in the measuring the economy uh, lesson how gdp is measured right what is nominal gdp what is real gdp so whenever nominal gdp is adjusted for price okay whenever it is adjusted for price we get the real gdp and this is always reported in rupees so we say that india's gdp is this many rupees okay these many uh, crore rupees so always of any country the gdp figure is reported first in the local currency in the domestic currency 
but how do we compare the gdp of two different countries okay we have to convert them into a common currency say us dollar so unless and until we convert our gdp into us dollar we will not be able to compare the gdp of two countries for example if we say that india's gdp say india's gdp is 500 trillion rupees okay if we say that india's gdp is 500 trillion rupees and uh, we say that us gdp us gdp is say 11 trillion dollars okay 11 trillion dollars so how do we compare this 500 trillion rupees and 11 trillion dollars we have to convert these rupees into dollar and then we will be able to compare whether india's gdp is high or us gdp is high so we have to convert them into a common currency and usually that common currency is us dollar and now this comparison this conversion can be done through two methods basically okay so the first method is that we use the market exchange rate so whatever is the exchange rate in the forex market for example if the exchange rate is that one dollar is equal to 80 rupees we will directly uh, divide our nominal gdp in rupees term by 80 okay so for example if we say that our gdp is uh, is you know 8 trillion rupees 8 trillion rupees we directly divide it by 80 so we get it in the dollar terms so the nominal gdp will be converted okay into uh, the common currency in, in the dollar terms and the resultant gdp is the nominal gdp expressed in dollars okay so uh, when we use the market exchange rate and we convert that into the common currency that is dollar by using the market exchange rate okay uh, we convert that gdp number so we get the nominal gdp in uh, dollars so that is known as nominal gdp now what is the purchasing power parity gdp okay ppp so conversion is done using the ppp exchange rate now let us understand what is ppp exchange rate see nominal gdp does not take into account differences in the cost of living in different countries okay for example let us say you can buy a cup of tea in usa for one dollar and one dollar is equal to 80 rupees so uh, cost of a cup of tea in usa is 80 rupees but in india you can buy four cups of tea in 80 rupees okay say 20 rupees so in india say price of one cup of tea is 20 rupees so in 80 rupees that is one dollar you can purchase four cups of tea in india okay this is because purchasing power is this is because purchasing power is more in india okay purchasing power is more in india as the cost of living is low thus you can have higher standard of living in india with the same income you earn in usa so for example see because the price levels are low in india okay purchasing power of rupee is more than that of dollar so you can have a higher standard of living with the same income for example if you are earning say uh, one thousand dollars in america so one thousand dollars is equivalent to eighty thousand rupees in india so with one thousand dollars in usa say for example you can uh, you, you can live a very uh, uh, you know very very uh, uh, you know low, lower middle class life lower middle class life but with eighty thousand rupees in india maybe you, you can live a better life okay you, you can live a better life with eighty thousand rupees in india so because with the same income you can have a higher standard of living now to account for differences in cost of living between countries we use the ppp exchange rate for conversion see now just converting by using the market exchange rate does not give us the true picture true picture of the standard of living and true picture of welfare in that country therefore we have to use the ppp exchange rate to account for differences in the cost of living okay now ppp exchange rate is the ratio of currencies purchasing power what is it it is the ratio of currencies purchasing power now let us look at the example the same example price of uh, you know cup of tea in usa is one dollar in india it is 20 rupees so basically as per ppp one dollar should be equal to 20 rupees when look from the uh, point of view of tea cup okay tea cup so uh, it should not be 80 rupees so because you can purchase the same thing with one dollar in usa and 20 rupees in india so one dollar is equivalent to 20 rupees basically that is the value of one dollar okay not 80 rupees so here you see that you know the value of rupee is much more than the actual market value of rupee however in reality see the here we use the example of a cup of tea 
okay but we do we cannot look at just one commodity okay the price differential between different commodities will be different for example for tea the price differential is four times in india it is 20 rupees there it is 80 rupees however maybe say for a mobile phone in india the mobile phone may be 1 lakh rupees in america it may be 80000 rupees so in america the mobile phone is less so there are you know thousands of commodities where we have to compare the price and therefore in reality a price of basket of goods and services is used to determine the purchasing power so we have to look at a basket of goods and services and not just one single so for example that basket is defined say there are 500 items in that basket and we look at the cost of that basket in india is say rupees 10000 rupees okay say 10000 so that basket can be purchased in india with rupees 10000 and the cost of the same basket in us is 200 dollars so the ppp exchange rate will be the ratio of the cost of these two baskets so 10000 rupees divided by 200 dollars so 50 rupees per dollar so this is our ppp exchange rate even though the market exchange rate is 80 rupees now why is there this difference see the difference is because see, there are a lot of uh, goods which cannot be traded goods which cannot be traded then again there uh, you know there are transportation cost right transportation costs are involved so goods cannot uh, cross the borders without transportation so all these things are taken into consideration and therefore this differential is there again there are a lot of uh, non tradable goods for example haircut so you know you cannot export haircuts from india to america and american person has to get the haircut from there only right so that is a, and also you know there are lot of dynamics in the capital markets also so that is the reason why market exchange rates are different from the ppp exchange rate but usually for the lower income countries like india the ppp exchange rates are higher than the actual market exchange rate and because the cost of living is less in those countries so uh, i hope now you understood the difference between the ppp um, gdp and the nominal gdp and usually the ppp gdp gdp for the low income countries developing countries higher than the nominal gdp usually okay not always but usually so uh, with this friend we are finishing the international economics lesson from the next uh, video next we will start a next lesson thank you